So in the 1970s, everything changed uh, for excellent reasons. Indonesia at that time was also importing rice. Indonesia was poor. They needed to improve the agricultural productivity. The Asian Development Bank funded the Green Revolution and a new era of agricultural expansion Agricultural management began in Bali, as elsewhere in many parts of the world, certainly in Indonesia. Um, but it had unintended consequences. So the basic ingredient was something they called a technology packet, literally packet technology in Balinese, which consisted of new rice varieties spread to grow rapidly and to take up chemical fertilizers effectively, plus those fertilizers, plus organochloride pesticides. And the farmers were urged to plant rice as often as possible and set aside the water temples. The planners of this system said it's perfectly fine to continue to have your lovely rituals in the water temples, but don't think this is a practical management system. Um, so this system, which devel was developed at the Rice Institute in the Philippines, was moved to Indonesia. But within a few years, there were unexpected problems, which you can probably anticipate. Uh, the line was, miracle rice is produced, miracle pests. If indeed all of the farmers plant at different times, it's like running our simulation model backwards, disrupting the p pattern of coordination until you wind up with the uh, patchy uh, structure in which the pests can migrate from one field to the other. It's just like the simulation model, and that's precisely what happened. So the first variety of rice that they tried this with, which was named IR8, proved vulnerable to an insect called the brown planthopper, 2 million tons lost in 77. So the, the agronomists and the geneticists bred up a new variety of rice, which was resistant to the plant hoppers, but it proved to be vulnerable to rice tungro disease. That explosion began a few years later. Uh, so they came up with a new variety, IR50, which was resistant to tungro, but not so good with rice blast and helminthosporium. You see where this is going. So as time goes on, then they, the farmers were, were required to put on heavier and heavier doses of pesticides until finally by the 80s, they were flying the island, spraying the fields, and meanwhile, the extension agents are reporting back to headquarters chaos in the irrigation systems. So we began to complain about this. The reason I got involved with the ecological modeling was really to convince the Asian bank that the temples had a practical function. They, the, the director was not happy with this in 1984, but we were happy, you know, eight years later, they sent teams, we talked to them, and in the end, uh, the Asian Development Bank agreed with us that the substitution of the high technology and bureaucratic solution was counterproductive, and in fact, they became converts to the water temple system. So that's a happy story. The planners have now dropped opposition to the water temples. In fact, they like to teach about them. They show our movie. Um, however, the farmers are still urged to buy these technology packets of fertilizer, and that's a problem because, as you've already learned, the volcanic rock is rich with nutrients. So here's a test that we did, adding phosphate fertilizer in six different fields, six subox from zero phosphate to the recommended dosage of 100 kilograms per hectare has no effect on yields. It's just wasted. Mm -hmm.